So we're back now with, uh, with more problems. Uh, we're working on problems from section 5.1. So we're now into section 5, which is a chapter on the unit circle and a chapter on the unit, uh, the, the circular functions, which are trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, tangent, etc. Uh, in section 5.1, we had a lot uh, of study about the unit circle itself. So the first question has you verifying that a point is on the unit circle. Okay, and to do so, there's all there's there's this there's one strategy. It's apply the Pythagorean theorem. Okay? If you get one, then the point is on the unit circle. If you don't, the point is not on the unit circle. So here's the point. It is negative twenty-four over 25 comma negative 7 over 25 and we're just we're asked verify or show that this point is on the unit circle so here we go all we're gonna do is take this x coordinate and we're gonna take this y coordinate we're gonna square them reason is again if I take any point on the unit circle any point a triangle is formed which has width x and height y and if I think about this for just a split second I see this oh hey that's a right triangle which means the Pythagorean theorem holds, which means the hypotenuse is one because we're on the unit circle. So if I square these and I get one, when I add them together, then we're good. Otherwise, it's not on the circle. So here we go. Negative 24 over 25 is the same as 24 squared over 25 squared. I am not gonna multiply those out. Then, we add to that 7 squared over 25 squared. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so that then simplifies the denominators 25 squared. They have the same denominator, so we can just bring them together. And on top, we've got 24 squared plus 7 squared. Now I said I wasn't going to multiply these out, but maybe I should. I'm trying to just think if there's an easier way from, for you to see this. Yeah, I don't think so. So, so we're, <laughs> we're going to multiply them out. So that's 7 squared, that's the, I'll do the easy one, you do the hard one. That's 49. 24 squared, what is that? Oh, 24 squared, we'll, we'll just, we'll do this the nice way. Is 24 times 24, which is 16, 8, 9, 96, bring down a zero, 8, and 4. So this is 6, 7, 5, 576. Okay. It's, it's funny. I know this is 625, but I don't know that's 576. Okay. So what's next? Well, we got to see. If we add these two up, what do we get? Well, 6 and 9 added together is 15. So we've got a 5, carry the 1. 4 and 7 is 11, so this makes a 12. So carry the 1. And 0 and 5 plus 1 is 6. So what do we get? 625 over 625. That's 1. So we've confirmed that this squared plus this squared is 1, which means it's on the unit circle. And we're good. Okay. So that's that question. Next question. Uh, it says P, a point, I'll have to write this one out. P is a point and it is on the unit circle 
and has an x coordinate equal to negative 3 over 5 and a negative y coordinate. Find the y coordinate. So I'm just seeing you, you couldn't see this. You didn't miss out much. Um, this is 1. Just realized you couldn't see that. Okay. Anyway, so number 2, this point P, right? We know it's x coordinate, it's negative 3 over 5. We don't know it's y coordinate. So we'll just put in a substitution variable there. We need to find that y coordinate. So it's almost like we don't have enough information, but we do, because we know it's on the unit circle, which means, just like in problem one, if we square both of these, what are we going to get? We're going to get one, because it's on the unit circle. So here we go. This, this is how we do it. So 9 over 25, that's negative 3 over 5 squared, plus y squared is 1. We'll subtract the 9 25ths over, and that gives us y equals 16 25ths. We think of 1 as 25 over 25, right? And then we take away 9 of them. So we we're left with 16 25ths. And that's y squared. I forgot a square there. So then we take square roots of both sides. So y equals plus or minus the square root is 16 over 25 which is the same as plus or minus 4 fifths we just take the square root at the top and we take the square root at the bottom which is 4 over 5 so which one is it? is it either is it plus 4 fifths or negative 4 fifths? well we're told that it has a <laughs> has a negative the negative y coordinate. Zoom needs to implement a spell check. <laughs> no, it's fine. A negative y coordinate. So it's it's negative four fifths. There you go. That's question two. Question three, find the reference number slash angle for the angle t equals 41 pi over 4 okay that's a that's a big angle right uh, we can think of this angle like so it's 40 pi over 4 plus pi over 4 That's 41 pi over 4. This is, this is a good way of thinking about it. We want to find the reference angle for this one. So we want to find the, the, the shortest angle to some multiple of pi. Okay, so this way of writing it is pretty suggestive. So this, this fraction on the left simplifies to 10 pi. And on the right, it's still just pi over 4. So what does this mean? We want to find the reference number, the reference angle, which is, again, the, the smallest angle. If this is our angle here, we want to find this angle here. Or if our angle ends up over here somewhere, we want to find this angle. We want to find the smallest one which goes to a multiple of pi. We've got pi all the way over here, 0 over here. We've got 2 pi over here. We've got 3 pi over here. We're, we're looking for the, the smallest angle, which gets us you know, to a multiple of pi. So what do we have here? We've got a multiple of pi, 10 pi, plus pi over 4. So how far are we from? A multiple of pi, or exactly pi over 4. 
from a multiple of pi. So that's the reference number. I call it also the reference angle. So that's it. The reference angle is pi over 4. So 41 pi over 4, if you were to do this in the way that I suggest in class, uh, I say draw a unit circle. That never fails. And then just graph it out. So here we go. So remember, pi is over here. So if I start here and I go here, that's 1 pi, 2 pi. Every half circle is another multiple of pi. So 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 pi. 10 pi brings us right back there. We've gone around the circle five times. But our angle is actually 10 pi plus pi over 4. So we have to go a little further. So we go to right there. So this is now 10 pi plus pi over 4, which is the, the original angle. So what is the smallest angle between this terminal side and the positive or negative x-axis? Well, clearly it, it's, it's this. It's not this angle. And clearly one of these is smaller than the other. And what is that angle? Well, it's the extra little bit that we went beyond the multiple of pi. OK, so the reference number is pi over 4 here. So finding reference numbers or reference angles for, angle, uh, for things like this is something that we'll be doing. Uh, finding coterminal angles as well. Um, we'll get into that. Uh, actually, we got into that in chapter 6 a little bit more. So, um, so that's it for section 5.1 questions. Uh, 5.2 questions, uh, I'll be back in just a minute. OK, and that one might take a little bit of setup. So be right back with that. I hope that helped.